to add, just put it in there. Very good. So welcome to our session. For those who are just watching, this is a housekeeping. We're going to have an opening prayer, but I just want to remind us, even those of us who are here, we are going to be recording the session, but also kindly be respectful of others as you use the chat and the Q&A. So Simas, I want you to go ahead. So Simas, your mic is on. Please unmute your mic and let's get started in prayer. So Simas, go ahead. Let us pray. Yes, please. Almighty Father and our God, we thank you for the gift of life this day. And we also thank you for this learning session we are about to start. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide the facilitators as they disseminate the information. We pray that you may grant us wisdom to understand and put into use the knowledge we are going to acquire. May it be of great benefit to our businesses, to ourselves, and to your people now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Everybody said amen. Thank you, Sosimas. That's really kind of you. Please type amen in the chat and we'll get started. Type amen in the chat. I'm waiting. Yes, yes, Christine, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Omari, Grace, and so many, many, many more others. Thank you. Yes, we're here and we like to start with prayer. Okay, it's a core value for us here. Now, let me walk you through uh, the agenda. Some of you have already been here quite a number of times and you know what the agenda typically looks like, but I want to walk through for those who may not be familiar. We will have a welcome note from, uh, uh, I was going to say, Honorable, <laughs> Honorable Peter and Demir, but he's a, he's a humble man, so he doesn't like titles much. So Peter, Demir, I will invite Peter shortly. Then we will have an interview chat with our guest speaker who I will be introducing shortly. And today we're going to be looking at a very interesting subject, tax compliance, okay? All of you would have known that already. So this came up as a result of uh, your you know, feedback. We said, what do you want us to focus on? And quite a number of, of the inputs that came through were around compliance, compliance. So this last couple of weeks, we've been talking about taxation. We've been looking at the legal implications of different aspects to our business. And today we're going to be looking at tax compliance and we have the perfect guest to help us with that subject, all right? Um, we will have a Q&A, so you'll have an opportunity to ask some question. And after that, we will also share his contact. So how can you get in touch with them so that, you know, if you need some assistance, they can assist you and, and you can have uh, separate arrangements, I suppose. Now, after that, we will hear from COPA and just a bit of a refresher. Those of us who are here and you've been looking to how do I borrow? How do loans work? We will do a bit of a refresher so that you know how to get the assistance that you need. And then after that, we will wrap up the session. At any point, also, if you have any question, put it in the chat or in the Q&A so that someone attends to it. We don't want you to go back with a question. It's not been answered. Otherwise, I want to say a huge welcome. And as we get started, I want to invite Peter and Demir. Uh, I should slide in. Honorable. <laughs> Honorable Peter and Dumia. <laughs> I know he doesn't like titles. <laughs> no, Honorable yeah, Peter and Dumia. Some here honorables are for the leaders in the government. <laughs> maybe, maybe we are we are praying for you to move to that side and make all the changes <laughs> that we need to see. <laughs> okay. Uh, some, some, Peter, some we are always <laughs> excited. We are always happy and excited when you, you know, facilitating these sessions. You always make us happy, and I think we really appreciate the work that you're doing, uh, yes, including uh, giving us titles that are not there. <laughs> but good to see Maybe you. Maybe I'm prophesying, but let me turn it <laughs> over to you so you can thank move. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sam, for for this session and this opportunity. And uh, good morning again, our dear customers. Uh, we are again uh, glad to see you uh, in this session. Welcome. We are happy to host you in this session. And uh, thank you for joining uh, the session and also being part of CoBank and uh, making CoBank part of uh, your bank of choice. Uh, and thank you so much again, uh, AMI team, for being our partners in training the entrepreneurs in this particular program. Uh, and also raising their capacity to continue to grow. Uh, those who are joining us for this uh, th this session for the very first time, is just to 
uh, welcome you again. Feel feel appreciated and feel at home. Uh, we always do this every Thursday uh, from 10, 11 to 12.30 p.m. Uh, just to have this session online, to continue to you know, get feedback and to also share some of the things that we feel would really help you to do. And uh, you could be asking, why then do you uh, do Cobank do this? Why are you invited to do, have this session? I know a number of you get SMSs, emails, uh, WhatsApp, uh, you know, invitations. Uh, the reason as to why we always do this um, is just to make sure that we also want to raise your capacity to continue to grow. Uh, because we understand as uh, business people, uh, you require information and, and, and relevant information that will help you to continue growing in your businesses. Most of the businesses that are going down uh, are really going down simply because they don't have the skills or the information or the management skills that they require uh, you know, to be able to take their businesses to the next level. And so as a bank, we came up with this program. And uh, as I indicated on the chart, we are not just doing the training online. We are also rolling out other programs that will be uh, physical physical meetings uh, where we also network with the other you know, members of businesses in your regions. And so uh, if you fear, hear that uh, we, are, we are coming to your regions and when you get invitations by your branch managers or your relationship managers, please feel free to join. And I think they will always be very, very useful sessions for you. Um, uh, there's one thing that we have also kept on uh, facing us uh, every time that we have this session, uh, and the need to you having a very, very close relationship with your branch managers and also your relationship managers, uh, because we know and we understand that as a business, you also require the financial, the financial solutions to, go, to grow. Uh, and, and I think that they will be very, very useful and uh, helpful when it comes to the loan solutions for working capital for your businesses, uh, maybe for asset finance, for the, uh, the collection solutions, uh, digital uh, tools that will also help you to make payments, uh, and so many other products that you require in your businesses. So maintain that very close relationship uh, with your you know, branch managers and your relationship managers. Let them understand what you need uh, and let them advise you. And here again, we are today talking about uh, tax and compliance, a critical topic that, that, that is very, very uh, necessary for you. And a number of us in the last session requested for this uh, training and this topic, and we are here uh, to provide uh, some skills. And uh, we have a very, very good uh, speaker and a trainer uh, who will be telling us what we need to do and what we don't need to do when it comes to tax and compliance. So again, for us is to really welcome you to this session, to participate, let, let us continue to engage and let us continue to learn, uh, share with us the questions that you have, who will be coming and we just around, just to make sure that we also respond to the queries that you have. Uh, with those remarks, Sam, I want to hand over back to you to proceed with the session. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kita Numia. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right then, thank you so much, Peter. Uh, please, yes, someone already knows what I'm gonna ask you. Please, let's appreciate Peter. A round of applause. Yes, I see that coming through. As many as possible, let's appreciate Peter for all the work he's doing behind the scenes. I'll keep mentioning he's one of the people behind this session, making sure, hey, let's do this every week for our SMEs because we can provide value to them. We can use our networks to bring value to their businesses and make sure that all of us are growing. So he's one of those people and we appreciate him as head of non-financial services at bank, right? Okay, very good. So Peter has touched on the, the COP side and just reminded us why we're doing this every week, what value you can get out of this. My role is also going to be to let you know this is a collaboration between COP Bank and AMI. So for those who are wondering who is AMI, you're here for the first time, you've never seen AMI before, that's absolutely great. I'll take the opportunity to say AMI is African Management Institute. And what we do is, a lot on running programs that help SMEs to grow. So we believe in enabling ambitious businesses and entrepreneurs like yourselves across Africa to thrive. The way we do that is by providing practical uh, programs like uh, um, Grow Your Business and a, a bunch of other programs that I will be letting you know about. 
How we do that, we love to maximize the tools, the technical, the technological advancement that we've experienced in the last couple of years. So using digital platforms like this, we've reached 39 countries, 42 plus thousand people trained. We have content in about five languages, so English, Swahili, French, and a few others. We have so many thousands of practical business tools that we use and we provide to our entrepreneurs. Lots of them, of course, come back and they say, man, this is really good. It's changed my business and we are growing and not just surviving, we are growing. And that's what we want to hear. So when the opportunity came up for us to partner with the uh, Bank in a session like this weekly webinar, providing you the value that you need and getting the conversation started on how to grow our business. Well, super exciting. So here we are. Now, speaking of opportunities, I will constantly be reminding you about the Grow Your Business program. There's a program that we are running right now. The special thing about it is that there's full scholarships available. So we run uh, several cohorts in uh, different periods. So some have already started. There's a whole bunch of entrepreneurs that have started. And well, if you want to be part of the next cohorts, let us know. The, there's a link in the chat. Let me just check that that has been shared. Um, that's going to be shared. Oh yeah, shortly it has already been shared. So it's Grow Your Business. It's a virtual program, so you don't need to go away from your business to learn how to grow your business. You can do it wherever you are. It's for all Kenyan businesses. So if you want to move to the next level, we welcome you. So just use the link in the chat and let's see how you can maximize that, right? So that's, uh, I'll be letting you know who you can reach out to in terms of follow-up for that as well. Okay, so... To get us started, um, let me just double check the time. Yes, we are in good time. So to get us started, uh, I found this quote as we were preparing for this session, and I found it absolutely amazing. So today we're talking about taxation and tax compliance. The goal of today is to make sure that we provide you all the answers that you need regarding tax compliance. And while I was searching, I found this quote by Albert Einstein, his comment on income tax. He was a brilliant man, one of the most beautiful, brilliant minds of our, our own earth, really, on, and, and through all the generations. And even he said, the hardest thing in the world to understand is the income tax, is the logic that now when I make money, now you're going to take it. What, what's, what's happening here? And I thought that was uh, interesting for you. I hope that made you smile or at least shake your head. Either you're nodding or you know. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to be focusing on uh, not just income tax, but tax compliance and making sure we provide you all you need to know as a business owner. Okay, so if you're ready for that, let me know. Let me know. Type yes in the chat. Okay, if you're ready for that conversation, type yes. Let me know how ready you are. If you're really excited, type capital Y, capital E, capital S. If you're feeling like you're in the wrong room, type I need to leave. <laughs> but I trust that all of us are here for the right reasons. Type yes if you're ready for a conversation about tax, okay, and compliance. Okay, very good. I know there's been many uh, additions and many bits of information you may be looking for, and uh, KRA, it's important for us to keep updated, all right? So yes, I think someone in the chat is saying, yes, I am ready, Michael. Okay, let's get into it. So in order to get us started, I want to give you a question. So in fact, to ask what is, and this I want you to type in the chat, and what you type is also going to be very helpful for our, our guest today in, in order to respond to, so that we make sure we are touching on the points where you want us to, to go, okay? What is the most confusing thing about taxes in Kenya? So think about it, just one question. Please don't put a whole paragraph, just one question, okay? When you think about it, what, what's, what's the most what do you, what makes you go, you don't really understand why this, you know? What's the most confusing thing about taxes in Kenya? I'm going to give you a few seconds to type in the chat, and then I'll invite our guests. And we'll kick off from there. Okay. So for Sarah, it's how it's calculated. Sarah, you can even be specific. Are you talking about income tax? Are you talking about uh, some corporate tax? Are you, you know, just a uh, capital gains tax, mode of taxing, variance? John, thank you. I see that. Uh, Benedict is just questioning what's the rationale for taxing, uh, for taxation? 
Why are the taxes so high? Pauline is asking. Michael is saying the computation of the income tax. Uh, our guest has quite a bit of work, but the good thing is that we got the perfect one. So I'm sure he knows all the responses to this and is going to help us work through. Okay. The computation of the income tax, uh, over taxation, Charles is saying. What are the calculations? Junior Fred, I see you. Thank you for being here so many times. Juliet, the percentage that is taxed, it's computation. I think computation seems to be a big one. Huh? Uh, Phyllis says being taxed in virtually everything. Why are we being taxed in virtually everything? Um, capital, uh, capital gains, I think. Patrick Murugu says, what's the threshold for SMEs? Enter tax bracket. Uh, there's a clear answer for that. Why are taxes so high? How are the brackets arrived at? Uh, turnover tax. Um, even uh, Amina says, even the KRS staff won't explain to you. Oh, sorry, won't explain to you what you need to understand, which leads to penalties. I love that. Okay. So obviously, this is, I think we're right. So we responded to you. We said we're going to get the right people to get you uh, some answers. And the fact that you're, that you're uh, typing so much in the chat means that we're in the right place. Okay. All right. Very good. So these are going to be factored in. And for now, though, let me take the opportunity now to invite our guest. So our guest speaker is Dennis Mwai. He's the Group Finance Manager, African Management Institute. Okay. So he's responsible for all the accounting that happens, not just within Kenya, but across several countries. So from uh, all the countries that are represented within Africa that have a uh, presence where AMI is concerned, is responsible for all that. So the uh, interesting thing is that then he has to know all the different tax implications across different countries, including Kenya. So we feel he's really, really a good fit. And he's also had uh, professional experience with finances and financing over the last nine years. So in financial reporting and management, he's an expert with complex financial models and forecasting financial statements, preparation, budgeting, financial system, all things finance, this is the gentleman to go to. And in on top of all that, tax implications are a thing that he knows a lot about. Now, I should flag for you, there's a lot to cover when it comes to tax, but at least you've given us your questions and we're going to do our best to focus on that so you can get started. But for now, please, a round of applause. Uh, use your emojis, use your, 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 your hearts, your claps, all that. And ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dennis Mwai, who is going to be our guest speaker today. Uh, Dennis, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you most so much, Sam. Um, I'm uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I want to say uh, thank you for inviting me. And it's such a good thing that um, AMI and uh, Cooperative Bank is doing here. Yeah? So because um tax is something that always changes yeah it's moving yeah so it's it's something that we really need to understand and we need to to, to do something about it uh, very fast good i love that you say that and and just to pick up of, of what you said we need to do something about it but it's also true that if you don't know something you can't change it so we need to act on what we know and and i know that's why we have you here to help us to understand this whole tax thing so, but let me ask you briefly, when you look at the chat and all that has been typed in there, what goes, what comes to your, to your mind on the questions I, there? I think people don't like tax and they think, um, <laughs> yeah, it's normal. Yeah, people don't like it. And, people don't uh, like tax. I think it's human, truly it's human. And uh, also from the chat, I'm seeing many people are facing the challenge of, uh, in terms of how to calculate it. Uh, yes. And I'm hoping we can, we can dig uh, a bit into it uh, and hopefully maybe even follow-ups after this call so that we can really help people understand and so that we can we can improve tax compliance in Kenya yeah 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 maybe the other question before we get into all this tax business what's your what, where does your drive come from because you have lots of experience when it comes to finance tax across different countries in the region in Africa what where does that come from um I, I believe uh of my drive comes from within uh, and it's something that I started uh, I have almost 10 years experience in terms of tax finance and all that and it's something that it's about 
trying to to innovate for me i always like something trying to innovate coming up with efficient ways to do things efficient way to be tax compliant efficient way to run businesses uh so that um we get the most return to our shareholders our owners and all that and that's what i'll be trying to to speak to yeah how do we ensure that as much as we are paying tax we're ensuring that the businesses today the smes still have something that they're putting in their pocket at the end of the day yeah so how are we going to be efficient in terms of the taxes we are going to pay yeah so that uh, at the end of it all also the businesses have something uh in their pocket yeah thank you for sharing that now let me just let everyone know we're going to have a conversation um and dennis when we had the conversation said no 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 this thing can be complicated but we want to simplify it let's just have a conversation and the conversation is going to be centered around quite a number of the questions that you've put in the chat and then so what we're going to do is we're going to have a conversation for about 15 20 minutes and as we go if you have a question put it in the chat and at the end of the 15 or 20 minutes then we will turn to the questions and uh, have 10 minutes of a quick fire just to get some responses from Dennis Moy. And at the end of that period, then we shall uh, release him and then we can, uh, we'll carry on to the, to the last bit of our session. All right, Dennis, let me, okay. let me fire off. Let me fire off quickly with, okay, when someone says tax compliance, what does that mean for SMEs in Kenya? Yeah. So um, to make it simple, Sam, um, tax compliance is that ability of a taxpayer yeah, uh, to be to declare uh, correct income, uh, to ensure that they are filing their returns uh, correctly. Uh, they're also filing them on time. They're also making the uh, payments that are due on time. And um, uh, some people say it's a decision. Yeah. So the taxpayer has to make that decision uh, to come to maintain also proper records, ensure that everything is okay, ensure that they know what tax obligations they have, they are filing them on time, they are paying everything due on time, and, and that's basically it. So how are we making that decision to ensure that we are we are compliant every, every single day? Because what we've seen is that lately the government is under stress, it really needs money, and when it needs money, it has to go for uh, the the taxpayers, yeah. And what is happening now is that um, we are having a lot of issues. We are having a lot of carry audits. So many people have carry audits these days, and that's why I want today. I want to stress the importance of how do we maintain also accurate records in terms of our business. As much as your business is really small, how do you start just setting up the the basic things, yeah? Because I see for you to start being compliant, you have to also start in terms of. How do you keep proper records so that based on those proper records, you're able to know the correct tax to pay. And also you are bringing in someone who will advise you on the, on the taxes that you should be paying. And at the end of it all, you save yourself a lot of headache uh, from the caring. Yeah. Now you mentioned also, no, it's important to know, have records so that you know what different types of taxes apply to you. Could you talk about that? What, uh... An overview, what are the different types of taxes that we need to be paying attention to? So the Kenyan tax regime is broken down into two. Um, we have the direct taxes and the indirect taxes. So the direct taxes are basically, it's basically your income tax, yeah? And the in, indirect taxes are the taxes that you pay when you're going to purchase goods. And this one will be the VATs and the custom duties, et cetera. So let me talk about the direct taxes. So the direct taxes will be mostly your income tax and income tax will have the, the tax at the end of the year for an individual, for a company, uh, that is a 30%. And then it will also have pay. And pay is the uh, is a tax on employee salaries, which also want to talk about a lot in terms of our SMEs. Most of our SMEs do not, are not factoring in, they are not paying uh, pay on employee salaries. We will have a talk about that. Uh, the other item that will fall under direct taxes will be taxes such as withholding taxes and uh, capital gains tax, as someone had pointed out there on the chat. Then the other side now, we have the indirect taxes, and these are the taxes that are levied on the purchases uh, in terms of items we buy. I would uh, like VAT is the one of the biggest taxes. And here is where once you buy an item at the shop, at the supermarket, you will see that already a 16% uh, of the item, of the price of the item is already loaded, uh, uh, is already loaded on the, on, on, the, on the price. So that becomes VAT. And also VAT is one of the taxes that I think we really need to see if we can discuss uh, based on the time so that uh, 
SMEs are not affected. Uh, the other thing that would apply here also, uh, yeah, so that would be it. The customs also come in. Also, I forgot about turnover tax. Turnover tax will be more of a direct tax. We can also mention about it uh, going forward. So that's a simple nutshell of how the taxes flow. And then now it's up to us now to talk about each and every tax, um, yeah, maybe on a simple, simple, simple basis based on the time. Where would you say we are? Please advise on, especially knowing everyone who is in the room, SMEs yes. who are in the room. Where where would be a good place to to start from? Indirect, direct. Uh, these the several taxes that you just listed. Let Let me start with the direct taxes. I can start with the direct taxes. The first thing yeah. that I want to ask SMEs is that you need to know the type of business you are running. There are various types of businesses we have, and each business has its own implications. So the types of businesses in Kenya, we have a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is where you, you have a business name that you're running. These are the small businesses where the pin of the business is the same pin as yours. And here we have, the, the, uh, here in terms of the KRA, in terms of the taxes, uh, tax is levied on you personal, yeah, on your PIN. So you just have a business name, it's a sole proprietor that is registered. And most of this one applies income tax on an individual. Then we, we have another type of business, which is a private limited company. So you start up a company. And the best thing about a company is that you have that limited liability where in case you have a lot of issues, even with taxes where you are not compliant, someone is coming for you, you have that limited liability where carry can only go only for the business asset, the company assets. Yeah, they do not go for your personal assets unless the veil has to be unveiled because of maybe fraud or something, but that's the best. And then we also have a partnership. So partnership also is still a, is still another type of business in Kenya where different people come in, become partners and set up a business. For this one, it is also taxed on the individual, the taxes. The taxes are still paid by the individual. So uh, the, the tax on the partnership will go to the individual's pin. Uh, so basically, those are the major, those are the major businesses we have. So it's really important for SMEs to understand the types of businesses we have. What business are you running? Are you running a sole proprietorship? Are you running a company? Are you running? Um, uh, and are you also running uh, a partnership or uh, sole proprietor or a company? So from there on now we talk about the taxes. So the direct taxes, I'll start with income tax. So income tax is taxed at the end of the year. Yeah. For, so it can be individual uh, income tax, or uh, which is called the individual income tax at the end of the year. Or there will also be um, corporation tax for the companies. That is at 30%. So for the individuals, it's taxed at the graduated buckets. Yeah. So at the end of the year, there'll be the graduated buckets. And what normally happens is that KRA noticed before the introduction of pay, people are not going and filing their individual income tax at the end of the year. So they introduced pay. So pay is basically the employer goes in at the end of every, for, these are for salaried employees. Uh, maybe they will apply for most people here, but or because maybe you're running your own business, but for salaried employees or your workers, what happens is that um, you should uh, a, a deduction is done every month, so tax is levied every month, and then at the end of the year, once you do your taxes, you on the return you are able to now indicate that already um, a certain amount of pay has been deducted through the year, and most likely you have uh, zero tax to pay at the end of the year. So that's for individuals. Uh, the other type of tax is uh, corporation taxes. So that's for the company at thirty percent. Here at the end of the year. Companies are allowed to have now their, their income, less their expenses, coming up to the profit. A lot of things go in there that you need someone to advise you on. And then you get your, your tax at 30%. Yeah. yeah. So, and that one I always paid. There are various ways of paying, and that's a whole story on its own. Um, so that's corporation tax. So the other type of direct tax I, I want to talk about is the turnover tax. So turnover tax is really important here because turnover tax was introduced to ensure that. SMEs are also contributing to our tax. And turnover tax applies for uh, any business that is any business that is operating that has a turnover, a yearly turnover of a million, one million, between one million and 50 million. So if your business is lying, if you if you project to have a business that will have an annual turnover of between a million and 50 million, you are yeah. eligible to turnover tax. And turnover tax is paid on a monthly basis by the 20th of the following month, and it's usually 1% of the cross sales. So 
this one becomes really straightforward because you do not need to keep a record of your expenses. Uh, you don't, you just need yourself. Yeah, if you're making a revenue of uh, 500,000 in, in March, just need to do 1% of the 500,000 and then you pay it by the next, by 20th of the following month. Uh, but the caveat here is that once, this one applies mostly, if you're starting a business right now, when you're registering for your PIN, that's when you're able to register for turnover tax. That's what, something I want to specify. That's when you're able. But if the business has already started running, KRA has already assumed that you, you, uh, you did not choose the turnover tax at that point. So already, if you're already on, if you're already, your company is already running and at the point of registering, you did not choose turnover tax, the only way you can get to turnover tax is you write a letter to the uh, commissioner and ask them to, to, for you to move to that regime. So that's something that I want to let you know. And turnover yeah. tax is really good because you do not deal with any more taxes. Yes. Uh, once you do your turnover tax, you don't need to do VAT. You don't you don't need to do income tax. So that's it. One percent of your gross sales every month, and you're done. You're good. So that's something that has been brought in by for SMEs to try and do so that they are able to be compliant. So it's a really good tax if you feel that the taxes are too much for you. That would be something. That would be something for yeah. you. So. Basically, that's it for the, uh, I would say the others, the other taxes in terms of the direct tax withholding and all that, they are bit, they are not so, uh, they are not so um, complicated uh, and I wouldn't want to so much stress on them right now because we are talking about SMEs. I would like to go to the indirect taxes where, where which would be affecting the SMEs. All right, so, that's for that. Yeah. So for the for the for the indirect taxes here, I say these are the taxes mostly you see on the levy already levied on the goods that you're already buying. I want to talk about VAT. VAT. So for VAT, the provisions in Kenya um, require that as long as your your turnover is above five million in a year, you should register for the VAT obligation. And right now we have very many uh, developments coming in. We have the new teams where we are required now to register in terms of, uh, uh, before we had the normal ETR machines that we would get an ETR. Right now we have the new teams, uh, the new teams process where we are being required to register with teams. And where based on that now, Kerry, you'll be, once you register for eTeams, once you raise an invoice, it will be transmitted to Kerry directly. And now that helps VAT in terms of, because ideally VAT is just a tax where you do a sale for 100, 100. Let's say you have a 100 shilling sale. So you'll charge 16%. So the 16% percent uh, the six, the sixteen percent of 100 will be 16 shillings. So in an ideal scenario, if you do not have any purchases, the 16 shillings should be paid to the government by, 20th, by the 20th of the next month. Smart, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in case, because in case you have purchases, because at the end of it all, you have to go and buy something so that you sell. So let's say also you bought something for 50 shillings. Yeah. So 16% of 50 shillings is eight shillings. So in that sense, you have a VAT payable to carry of 16 shillings, a VAT refundable from carry of eight shillings. So the net is eight. So care, instead of sending money, carry sending you back, carry. I require, uh, initiated that people should just send whatever is the net of the, the two. So you're able to mm -hmm. pay eight shillings by the next, by 20th of the following month. So you have to file your, your VAT return by 20th of the following month and also ensure that taxes are paid also by the same date. So VAT is something really prevalent and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tax that SMEs should really comply. As long as you're doing more than uh, 5 million a year, and you're not on turnover tax, you're already, you, you're not on turnover tax, you should register for, for VAT. You should have VAT. the team, uh, you should have teams right now that uh, now will be transmitting your invoices to KRA uh, directly. Uh, we know it's still catching up, it's still catching up in terms of a transmitting, but we are hoping that, uh, KRA is hoping that that will come in very soon. So I want to emphasize that we really need to be very careful about VAT. Yeah, VAT, yeah, the penalties of VAT are really bad, are really big, huge, and there's a lot of um, audits with, with regards to VAT. And then the rest yeah. is the customs. I really don't need to talk a lot about the custom because most SMEs are not, 
most of them are not importing items, uh, but customs is basically the, the taxes that will be levied once you import something uh, at, at, at the uh, at the port. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I hope I've given a simple uh, a simple um, definition yeah. of the yeah yeah. So just to type, come back to to VAT, so sixteen percent. It seems like a lot hinges on our documentation. So if you don't have the so I just wanted you to emphasize that a bit. What does that look like yeah. for SMEs? So in terms of the law, we are, we are required to keep records for five years. So I want to emphasize that if Kerry was to knock on your door, they are, they are allowed by law to request for documents up to going back five years. So I want to emphasize that. And one of the things that Kerry has done, it has pushed the burden towards you. So it is really important to keep records, to keep clear records. And the reason of this is because that um, um, what KRA does, if you do not have proper records, uh, like I will give a, an easy scenario. If you do not have proper records, what they do is they just get whatever is readily available to them and whatever is really favors them. So someone will just take your bank Thank statements. You. They'll just take your bank statements and add everything, any coin that has come in on your, on your bank, whether someone gave you a loan, whether someone refunded something, they'll just tax it wow. at sixteen percent, or even at thirty percent in terms of corporation tax. Mm -hmm. So, if you're maintaining proper records, you already have a know that on this and this day, five years ago, someone gave me a loan. So you'll be able yeah. to tell that the tax guy that this was a loan. That's, that doesn't this apply. <laughs> yeah. So I want to emphasize that we need to be maintaining at least a profit and loss account. As SMEs, we need to be knowing what our income is. We need to be knowing what our expenses are, so that at the end of every month we're able to tabulate what is vulnerable, what is not, and we're able to to file correct returns. There's a lot of huge penalties that are coming in. So you'd imagine if someone comes and audits is, audits you for the last five years, and they are able, they get uh, they get uh, the 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 tax the penalties are. Punitive. They go even sometimes twenty percent of the tax, uh, and and they could bankrupt you. Yeah, they could. You could. You could go down very fast. So I want to emphasize that at least maintain a profit and loss account. Know your incomes. Know your know what. Know your incomes. Know your expenses. Have them detailed. Have the support. Have a file. Support each and every item. Place them, and then you will be okay. Yeah, I suppose it goes without saying, it's also useful to have, um, for those of us who especially use physical records, it's useful to move them to digital, either forms, either Excel or some sort of software so that we can have those records, because otherwise we can lose them. And that, uh, it sounds like it has a major effect on, on the implications. Yeah, 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 that's a good point, because um, of late we've had, we've had a lot of cases where people are losing their data. And of course, losing your data is not a reason for you not know, to, to have the, the, the proper evidence in terms of a carry audit. So, yeah. and one of the things that is coming up is there are very good systems that are coming up that are very cheap for SMEs. Yeah. Uh, like I would say QuickBooks is an easy one. Zoho is a really good one that has come in. Zoho is even free for two users. Yeah. You don't need to pay any subscription monthly. For two users. Yeah. If you go yeah. above two users, I think three or four users is 500 bob per month. And I would really advise people to go for Zoho. Just Google Zoho, see, sign up. If you're just two users, your accountant and you, it's a really easy way to just maintain your income, your expenses, your balance sheet. It's a really efficient way. And the bright thing about Zoho, I, I'm not working for Zoho, but I've used it. Um, but um, Zoho already has input all the tax elements in Kenya. So you're able to select whether something has 16%, doesn't have 16%, is, is there withholding there. So it's already, it's able to calculate for already you taxes out. on a month. Already worked out perfectly for you. So that's something you can do. Also QuickBooks is really easy, already has those elements. So for SMEs, I would recommend those two systems. Just go check them out and they'll really help in terms of managing your, your accounts every month. Very good. Allow me to, to shift our attention to, okay, so we've understood Taxes are really important, indirect, direct. We need to keep records so that we know what applies to us, especially even five years in the, down the road, all these things. Now let's talk, okay, so I've understood that. Tell me about the process of registering for those taxes that apply to me. It's the process like, 
including requirements and, and you know anything that you can share around that okay uh I'll start, the first one when you apply for a pin uh the automatic um whether it's a company whether it's uh it's an individual the automatic tax uh, tax obligation that you get is the income tax this one will always be set there it's on default you'll always be uh you'll always be registered for that so in terms of the other taxes um at the point of registration you may choose to register for vat and uh, this is when you know that um you are you you expect to do more than five million so you should register at that point uh so for vat that if your turnover is above five million you'll be required to register the other element for vat the other item that we require you to register is um in case you're doing management or professional fees you do not now apply in terms of the five million um month. So if your business is doing management or professional fees, it doesn't matter whether you do above five, five million in sales or that you register, whether you're doing a million or two million, you have to register for V. And the process of registering these days it has changed. Before we would just apply on ITAX, have a carry guy approve it very fast. So for now, once you apply for the VAT obligation, once you've met the criteria. Um, carry have to carry agents are sent to your place of business. They have to come and verify that it's a business that is running. And this one is to address there are some people who are running shady deals, uh, creating fake receipts. They do not have an office. Someone is working at home from his bedroom and creating fake receipts, doesn't have a business. So that's what they're trying to address. So for now, VAT, someone has to come to your place of business, verify it's there. Um, they are going as far as even asking for your bank statements just to see where you are, if you're doing any shady deals, if you've been late in terms of um, registering, but it's something so, so hard. So it's something that I want to highlight it, that it's uh, VAT uh, application is a bit trickier. So the other thing about VAT is once you're applying for VAT, you also have to apply for teams. So for the online, they've, they've brought, in, brought in an online Teams application where you can register online. You don't need to buy the machine anymore. So you just go on online, set up, register. I think you have to go to KRA, visit KRA so that they can uh, do the final verification and uh, your Teams account will already be full. So no, we no longer need to buy all those machines. Uh, we, we no longer need to buy all those machines. In, that's VAT in terms of application. For PE, this pay, so for pay, I want, if you have employees who are earning, um, I believe right now, anyone earning above 24,000 a month should be paying pay. And uh, pay will be subjected to salaries. It will also be subjected to allowances up to a certain level, uh, yeah. up to a certain amount. And so it's something that, so for pay, once you have employees, as long as you're earning 24,000 and above, even for you as an individual, as an owner of a business, if you're taking money as a salary from the business that is above 24,000, you should be paying for pay because you're more of an employee in a way, as much as you are a director. Yeah, yeah. Or a so that's something that you really need to know. Uh, you really need to, to understand that you need to apply. For pay is really easy. You just need to go on ITAPS, apply, just support, maybe a letter saying that you need pay, you have now employees. They will just most of the time they just do a call, confirm that you're the one applying, and then they just approve it. There will be no, the, the, no one will come to your premises. So that's really easy. For turnover, I say uh, for turnover, I say that it is applied at the point of um, getting a new pin. So you opt for turnover at that point, yeah, because uh, since you've as long as you will do between a million and fifty million in annual turnover. If you've already, if you did not do that at the point of opening your PIN, it carry uh, assumes that you opted for income tax regime. You did not opt for turnover. So to change, if right now you want to change, you have to write a letter to carry explaining why you want to change to turnover, uh, and then follow up and hopefully they can change that on your system. So that's for turnover. That's for turnover. That's yeah. what you need to do. Um, is there any taxes for? Other taxes such as withholding, those ones come directly already as long as you have income tax, they are part of income tax. So they'll be yeah. done. So withholding is a tax on professional services. Normally in Kenya, if you're paying any professional, um, a professional service, yeah, like a trainer, a lawyer, an accountant, an auditor, that is a consultant. Yeah. And I'm yes. emphasizing a consultant. If it's a consultant offering professional services, you need to deduct 5%. Yeah, and it's for the limit also here is 24,000 a month. 
So as long as it's 20, more than 24,000 a month, you need to be deducting 5%. So the, if you're, let's say you're going to pay him, a, a lawyer has charged you 100,000. So you need to deduct 5%. You'll pay him 90 fees. 5% goes to carry. So that's something that we, so withholding also comes in as default. You already be yeah. just, yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, okay, we already, it's interesting. We already mentioned that there's no way to cover all the ground here. I'm interested yeah. though, let me ask you maybe one more question and then we'll we'll jump into uh, some of the, the responses that are coming through. Although Junior Fred already says, I'm happy you no longer have to buy the machines. Uh, yes, yes. Amina says, I have the ETR. Do I still need to register on Teams and so on? We'll come to that shortly. But um, a question that I did not want to leave out is, Tax avoidance, tax evasion. Ah, uh, talk to me briefly. Which is which and what applies? And then we'll get into the, 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 the few questions. So there's tax avoidance and tax evasion. So tax evasion is the, is the point where you're deliberately, um, you're deliberately um, as a tax payer, Hiding from KRA. Hiding from KRA deliberately and this yeah. one has a lot of it can go they go all the way towards taking you to court mm -hmm. even um going and charging on your account such that i've seen a scenario where there's an sme that had done that yeah and they went all the way towards they they charged them over 20 or so million in terms of taxes and they're so brutal wow. and what they do is that they write to all the banks because they know wow. you may have be hiding in the bank. So I saw almost 30 or 40 letters. They write to every bank in Kenya, including cooperatives, and tell them that yeah. um, in case any money goes to this account, please deduct it and send it to us. And what they also go a step ahead and write to all, all debtors, all people that are working with you. All wow. people. So it also tarnishes your image because they write to everyone anyone working with you and tell them that this person has not been complying. In case you have any money owed to him, you are obligated. Legally to obligated, to, to, obligated to bring to it to us. Yeah. So that's okay, how- So that's I, I guess this is, this is good incentive to let us know, avoid evasion. <laughs> avoid evasion. Uh, I am saying it's, it's, it's really, it's good to, to, to be compliant, yeah? The other one is, uh, it's about uh, the avoidance. Avoidance yeah. is that way where, in accordance with the law, you are able to be efficient and come up with strategies on how to minimize your tax, uh, how to minimize your tax uh, uh, obligation in in a very in a legal way. Like let's say you're starting off a business, you know that you'll have income tax, you'll have VAT. You can choose as long as you know it's a small business, you can choose to go for turnover. So turnover is really easy, one percent of that. So you can you can yeah. really choose to do that. Um, and, and and so there are various strategies that you may come up or you may come up with. The other items that I will see is that if you're facing a challenge with businesses, we are saying that business are dealing with VAT. You find that you charge people VAT; they are not paying you at the end of the month, but you need to pay that VAT. So what I tell people is that try and make your billings at the start of the month. So let's say we are in April, try and do your billings at the first day or first week, so that you know you, you remember we have to pay VAT like from April by 20th May. So if you charge people on the first week of April, you have 50 or so days to collect your money and pay KRA. But if you bill people on 30th April, mm. you know that you just have 20 days to collect that money. So do you see whether you can just wait and bill in on 1st of May? And then if it's okay, uh, and then you have 50 days. So those are the things that you really need to think about. Yeah. And all these things I want to specify is that talk to a tax expert that you know, sit down with them and let them guide you on something that is within the law that you can use to, um, you know, ensure that your tax are efficient and you also are able to, to just pay uh, proper tax. There's one tax that, sorry, Sam, that I didn't talk about that is really important is about rental income. For residential, I want to highlight there may be SMEs that have residential uh, income. So for income, it's broken down into residential and property and commercial income. For residential income, as long as your 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 yearly income, your annual your annual rent income for residential properties only is between two hundred and eighty eight thousand to fifteen million. 
you are in the monthly residential income regime. What that means is that every month you should be paying 10% of your gross rent. And this one applies, remember, to um, residential. So for commercial, it will go on as normal income at 30 percent at the end of the year, but you, you do your income less your expenses. But for residential income that is between, that is 288,000, that's like 24,000 a month, uh, 288,000 to 15 million every year, uh, annually, 10%. you should be paying percent of your gross, gross rent. So if you're charging someone um, 50,000 in terms of rent, the total rent that you have is 50,000 a month, 10% of that 5,000 should be paid by the next 20th of the next month. So that's just something that I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, first of all, let me appreciate you, Dennis, for bringing so much learning into this space. I think it's really, really helpful. Now, let me take a moment. If you have a question, uh, please put it in the chat. We'll take the next 10 minutes. And um, I should mention, uh, Dennis, so I know this, this subject is so broad and it's when it comes to law, there are no short answers. Yeah, yeah but I'm yeah. going to I'm going to see if I can nudge you to give me short answers so we can cover okay. as much ground as possible. Okay, right. so okay. Um, how can you, re Paul Njagatha is, Njagatha is asking, how can you remove uh, element of double taxation? Okay, sure. How can you remove the element of double taxation? Um, how can you deal with it? How can we deal with it? Uh, first, we need to we need to to identify how it's coming in, uh, how the element. I did more content to it in terms of the double taxation. Yeah. I just need to. Uh, I believe that one. I did more element into it to know. But the best thing about whenever you are coming across it, talk to someone who's really um, a tax expert about it and let them talk to you about it. There are always ways to address it. There are always ways to uh, tax avoid uh, such thing in a legal way. So I would advise. I need more content on that, which type of tax we're talking about so that I'm able to, to give a proper answer. Yeah. So that one would definitely need a tax consultant just to give more detail. More right. detail on what exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, Phyllis, you may have mentioned some of these, but Phyllis is asking, Philip Mitty, is withholding tax final for a consultant? No, it's not final. Um, so for a consultant, once, uh, if you've been deducted 5% at the end of the year, you still need to do your, you need still ideally need to pay your 25% that is remaining. So because you've just paid, Carrie has just received 5% of your income. But the good thing is, is that at the end of the year, now you need to do your income, less your expenses, get the tax there, they are on. And then what will happen is that you already have already prepaid tax in terms of the 5% that has already been prepaid, that someone has already deducted you. So at the end of it all, in an ideal sense, you pay 25% at the end of the year. So it's not final. Thank you. Charles Otachi is asking, well, you mentioned five years records. What happens after five years records? Do you, I mean, can you throw those away? Do you need to keep them? How do you manage that? So in terms of the law, I would advise you do not throw them away. But in terms <laughs> of the law, uh, no one, uh, the only way they can go past the five years, if they notice uh, elements of fraud, um, they're able to prove that there's substantial fraud that has happened uh, past the five years and they can come for it. But uh, for a normal audit, they will not go for it. But I'll still advise, let's have it. Let's still have yeah. it. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Never, never know. Also, um, Peter is asking, apart from p and you mentioned uh, key records to keep p &L, profit and loss. Um, apart from that and expenses, what other records do we need? Um, Carry requires the profit and loss and the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is also something really important. And you need to have all those schedules in, the, in, in uh, in place. And also when I talk about the PNL, I say that yes, it's the PNL, but there's a lot of schedules that you need to maintain. You need to have that uh, a flow of your income. Also, the other key item that I see Kerry asking for is that you need to have your cash book. So our cash book is just a replica almost of your bank statement where you're now analyzing whatever is coming into your bank statement. So that's that's really crucial. If you have inventory, so you should always have a listing of your inventory. Uh, so that one is really key because so many people are able to play around with inventory to, to reduce their taxes, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it can be in a tax evasion way or tax avoidance way, but also that one is really key. And also the other lastly item is that keep a record of your fixed assets because fixed assets, we are always able to claim a certain amount of that to reduce our taxes. So KRA will always ask for a full breakdown of your fixed assets on your balance sheet. Yeah. Thank you for that. Elisha Odiambo is asking, if I loan someone yeah. money, 
is it true that KRA should would 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 KRA tax the repayment? How does um, that work? So for KRA, uh, the repayment will not be taxed. Yeah, uh, in terms of a repayment, the repayment will not be taxed. It depends on who it is. If you are loaning an employee a certain amount of money, uh, if it's a staff, if if it, if it's a loan to an employee, um, as long as it's if it's zero at zero percent interest, yeah, so an employee will be deemed to be getting a benefit, and it brings up a tax called fringe benefit tax. I would, because of time, I would advise you to go and look at it, and the the, the reason here. Is that, um, fringe benefit tax is that um, you're giving there's someone going for a loan at the bank at 13 percent but you're giving this person at zero percent interest so yeah. there's an element of that also it also applies it may also apply to uh, it may also uh, apply to a normal individual carrier goes really tough and says that you're giving this person uh, some loan at zero percent uh, at zero percent interest uh, they'll just charge a benefit in terms of that interest so in terms of the repayments there will not be any tax in terms of that Principal. but they may say that there's a benefit that you're giving to someone and if mostly if he's an employee there will be an element of fringe benefit tax yeah okay very interesting um let me see what we can do here um Grace Orondo has a bit of a scenario. Let me just read it quickly. Um, I have a sole proprietor business that I use my personal pin. I always do tax return on pay annually. My business turnover is less than two million. Am I required to do any other returns? So, yeah, you if you do pay, uh, if you do pay, so the only thing that will be remaining because you have your pin is um. Is the income is the individual income tax at the end of the year? So chances are you won't have any tax to pay because you're already paying, you're already doing your you're already doing your pay. So you just have the income tax return indicate that you've already had the amount of pay. The tax would be zero. Since it's five hundred thousand, you're not eligible for the for VAT. So you will not have any other taxes to pay. Thank you for that. Patrick Mburugu says regarding residential income, what if your loan repayments are higher? And the total gross rental income, or do taxes uh, apply? So, uh, for the gross, I want to for the residential income. As I said, it's on the yeah. it's ten percent on the gross rent. Uh, on the gross yes. rent, do not care whether. Yeah. And remember, repayment is not an expense. Yeah, repayment you're just returning the money that you borrow. Interest is the expense. Okay. So, interest okay. also will not be factored in into that. Remember, for residential income, it's straight up ten percent on your. In your on your gross on your gross income, they do not care whether you're paying loans or you're doing that. It's just on yeah. your income. It's a bit and that's, if you, <laughs> and that's just a reminder. That's between two about two hundred k and fifteen million. That's the, for the residential, right? Residential, yes. Okay, yes. very good. Um, uh, Grace says thank you for the clarification in the chat. Uh, let's see which other one. Um, now there's more specific scenarios. I think. Uh, all this, I just uh, let me let me look for a bit more general. Mildred, yes, Mildred says, how many months at most can you file nil VAT, especially if your business is dormant? Um, normally, as per the law, there's no limit in terms of what you can file nil because if you're getting nil, it's nil. Uh, what happens is that after a specific period of time, what Kerry does is it goes in and checks who has been filing nil returns on a on on a, uh, every month on a, on a monthly basis and what they do is that they first hold your pin and you have now to once they hold that pin in terms of they put a hold on your vat you have to visit carry and explain to them right. why are you doing it and what happens is it starts a, 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 a it's like a snow snowball effect they will ask for your bank statements why are you saying Neil? it means that you should not have mm. any money for vat and then it becomes a whole big issue so i would say that if you feel that the VAT, the new returns are too many apply for on ITAX, apply for, or you can always choose to deregister for VAT if you feel that you'll never use VAT again, or you can make it dormant. You can also apply for a dormancy or for the VAT obligation. So once you make it dormant and it's you have to go to KRA and have them approve it, you will not be required to do it, to, to be filing the new returns every month. And once you want to use it, now you just apply for an activation of the from the dormancy. If you choose to register, it goes away. Also, you can always choose to remove the VAT obligation from your PIN. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a clarification for Christine Mirico about taxes and loans. Just to be sure, KRA does not tax loans, yes or no? Or is that 
what's the there was a clarification there yeah taxes does not does not tax loans if your money if you've taken a loan money is coming in you've taken a loan from cooperative bank no one will tax you on that yeah because you repay the loan money coming in and you repay i'm just saying as in the only places where we have if you're giving staff loans if you as a business are giving staff loans yeah you're becoming like a cooperative bank there'll be some uh, element okay. of yeah but in terms of if it's money you're receiving from cooperative bank um there's no loan that you're coming in so it comes so, in at the interest at the interest point of view if you are the one giving out the loans yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, if okay. you are the one giving out the loans yeah. Okay. I think there's someone who said that the answer on the loan repayments was a bit vague on the high on the rental income. I just want to I just want to emphasize that I know there's a scenario where you've taken a loan, you've built up your residential income, you're repaying your loans, you're repaying your loan. There's a monthly amount you're paying, but you're still getting some income. Carry does not factor in whatever you're repaying. The law is clear. Rent the rental income is ten percent of your. Uh, residential rental income monthly yeah so it yeah. does not allow you to deduct anything it's on your rent so whether you're paying this or that that's it it is now your cost you need to add it you know you're repaying your loan you know it's still carrying it 10 percent of your rent so okay. that's that's this i hope i was a bit clearer okay. so it does not factor in here okay that's fine and i know you did mention that um but when we want to get more specific, it's useful to have a further conversation, a full conversation with the tax consultant. So yeah. the answer you may yeah. be looking for may not be uh, with the full detail here in this short conversation. Um, custom tax, you I know you did not go into that. Someone was asking just what's the confirmation on percentage on custom? Um, I would say uh, I would also want that on in terms if we start talking about custom tax we'll, we'll spend more time but yeah, yeah i'll be willing to talk about it later there's always there's a whole computation of custom tax that okay. goes in because of the vat it also comes in in terms of your corporate the cop customs and all that so uh, because of time okay. i would appreciate if we can do it off off offline yeah okay good you know what um we could keep going and there's more questions but i also don't want to hijack the whole session and also hijack mr dennis Moy's time for the whole morning so i want to say a huge thank you now many of you may be wondering okay so how can i be in touch with dennis dennis has been kind enough to share his uh i'm just double checking um just give me a second please let me just double check something here i want to make sure that you get access to Dennis. Just give me a second, please. Uh, right. Just a second. I need to something on the slides that I need to adjust. So bear with me, please. Okay. Very good. So Dennis has provided his email, and that's something that we can use to reach out to him for further consultation and things like that. Just give me a second. Let me share my screen. Here we go. So if you'd like to, there you go. This. So there's an email here. Uh, you can find Dennis Mwai um, at, so Dennis at africanmanagers.org. But you can also find him on LinkedIn and all the other socials under Dennis Mwai. So LinkedIn is, I guess, a good place to also get started. If you want further consultation, you can reach out to him there. But I want to say, Dennis, thank you so much for being here. In fact, let me allow me to give you the opportunity to have your, what are your parting shots? Um, I know we've covered so much ground, but what are your parting shots in this conversation? So yeah, thank you so much, Sam, for the opportunity. I really hope um, for the SMEs we try to cover, it's a lot. I think we need a whole day or a whole session. <laughs> yes, um, we do for it and i'm glad to be back anytime you need me so i just want to emphasize that people the government is really looking for the taxes yeah uh, we don't need to bury our hands our heads in the sand please go back know your numbers just start doing your accounts properly at least just know where you are yeah yeah if, if you're not complying it's not too late start carry carry also lessons yeah these days it's lessons that you've started so just do your accounting correct seek someone who can advise you properly on a tax uh, some some these days people will just advise you for free and then after that if they need your services they'll charge you but it just would we'll just get someone yeah there are so many i'm seeing a lot of cases every day from my friends from people i know 
it's really not good. So there's a lot coming in. Just please check with people. Uh, learn, attend seminars. There are so many. Even just Google ISPAC. ISPAC also has a lot of trainings on uh, taxes every day, every month, even for general taxes. Just check. And yeah, so thank you. And um, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully we can meet for uh, another session again. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Please help me. Uh, please. Uh... Peter has one more question. How do you identify a good accountant to help you with tax matters? <laughs> That's the last question. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I believe you have, you have to. <laughs> yeah. So you have to. You have to. Uh, the first thing you have to check their their qualifications. A good accountant has to be a member of this pack, registered with this pack, and then I think at the end of it all, it's about you, your notion. Yeah, sitting down with them and advising you. You'll you'll have a feeling of whether that person really knows what they're talking about. And the fact that you're able to ask a question and he answers, that's a good thing without hesitating. I, I think that's the best thing you can do, apart from now checking the qualifications, the memberships with this pack, that's there, but also your notion, your gut will tell you, yeah, once all those checks out, yeah. I think this is a setup question because Dennis has answered all our questions without hesitating. <laughs> And he has left us feeling very confident. <laughs> so yeah, please check out Dennis on his LinkedIn. Um, he might be able to help you with some of the work that you need done. But I know he's a busy man. And uh, yeah, just please check out, check, check his content out and uh, see if you can reach out to him for further conversation. Thank you, Dennis. Again, I will allow you to drop off now. I know you have quite a busy schedule to attend to and we've taken a lot of your time already. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Sam. Okay, very good. All right. Wow. That was amazing. Uh, another round of applause, please. If you if you do know where that is, the buttons and so on. Let's do that. Now, let's take the next few minutes. I did promise that today we would be looking at tax compliance, everything you need to know from uh, registration to with my business, which ones am I liable to, to, to file and all these different things. And I think it's been an amazing session. To cap it off, I want to turn over our attention to Peter, who is going to walk through what we need to know when it comes to accessing loans and financing. For some of this information, sometimes it's easy to forget, but we need to come back to it. So let me invite Peter, uh, just walking uh, us through COP's basic borrowing requirements. Peter, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And allow me to appreciate uh, Dennis for quite an uh, insightful session. I think that was a very, very, very good uh, session. And I see a number of customers respond and uh, indicate that they are really learning a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. I think uh, getting another chance, we will have you in this session. And I think uh, the question I asked on how do you identify a good uh, accountant or someone to help you on tax matters was very deliberate just to alert uh, the participants that uh, the, 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 the need to have uh, someone who will help you on accounting and also the tax matters is very, very, very uh, important. It's, need, it's that need. And I think uh, it's for us to try and understand who can help us because I think tax matters are also quite broad and you need to have someone to handhold you uh, just to be able to, uh, to be able to uh, be compliant with tax and, and also KRA matters. So I think that that was quite a neat and very, very insightful session. And I hope that uh, we have been able to learn quite a number of things. Uh, I think for us, just to uh, take us through a, a very, very brief session on some of the questions that we've also been receiving through emails and also through the chat. Um, and in regards to documentation, I think today we are talking about documentation and also compliance. Um, we, we also have what we call the core bank basic uh, borrowing uh, requirements, some of the things that you'll be looking uh, forward to, to give us as you get uh, finance, as you go to look for loans, as you apply for uh, business loans. Uh, you need to have uh, personal details in terms of the, um, the ID and also the KRA pin is one of the things that you're looking uh, to ask you to provide. We also look for business profile. I, I think we need to understand what is your business and what are the mode, mode of your business, where do you purchase your item and who do you sell to. So a bit of business profile, 
Uh, for businesses uh, that are registered, uh, you need to have that business registration certificate. Uh, I talked about the KRA pin uh, for the companies, uh, certificate of incorporation and members and articles of association. This, this is for the limited companies. Uh, for businesses that are uh, 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 limited companies, again, we need to have the accounts and also depending with the amount that you're borrowing, we also require at least three years uh, books of accounts. They could be management books or they could be audited books just for us to be able to understand the profit and the loss and also the balance sheet and also the the cash flows uh, projections. And then uh, we normally request for bank statements for six months to one year, depending again with the amount and uh, also depending with whether you're banking with us. If you're banking with us, we will not require any statements. We just need to have uh, you provide us with um, uh, the account details and we'll be able to get or generate the statements. Uh, if you have other loans uh, or other obligations in terms of uh, the borrowings we will also require maybe the uh, letter of offer uh, from the other institutions but also the loan statement um, then once you apply the facilities we require to get the loan application it may be a letter written down all uh, a form that you fill to request for the amount and also indicating the purpose for the loan and the duration and so many other uh, requirements, uh, other details that are also in that particular uh, form. Then security as needed. Sometimes we uh, re require to give us a title deed or a logbook or, a ca or cash covers. Again, this is also dependent on the amount that you're also borrowing for smaller loans. Uh, you'll be able to get um, a logbook uh, or you'll be able to provide us with the uh, cash covers uh, for bigger loans, you may need to provide us with a title deed where we the charging uh, or security perfection of that uh, title deed. Then if you are purchasing a motor vehicle, uh, you need to provide us with what we call the proforma invoice. Uh, if you're buying um, as a lad, you will need to uh, give us a sales agreement, agreement or a draft sale agreement indicating the cost of the property, uh, and uh, the terms of payment, uh, so that then we are able to see the amount that we need to finance you. I think those are the general or basic uh, business borrowing requirements. They may vary depending with the facilities, but generally, as you come to us to facilities, these are some of the documents that you need to put into place. I think those are the things that uh, some I wanted to highlight it, just to remind our customers as they go to look for loans that they may require to have uh, some of these uh, uh, documents. Thank you, Sam, and over back to you. Good. Maybe uh, we'll take the next few minutes um, and see if we have any questions around any of these documents. I know it's been a while, the last couple of sessions, we have not had the chance to bring this information back to you. And I know that many of us have been looking to just confirm what are the borrowing requirements. Of course, they may vary pending some discussion with your branch and so on. But do you have any specific question around these? You need clarity, confirmation on any of these. I'm looking at the chat. If you do, please type it in the chat and we can have Peter uh, speak to that. Just going to give it a few seconds. I'm, yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah, Sam, even as they look at that, uh, just also to remind them that in some cases, we don't require any, any documents. If you are getting the loan, uh, mobile phone, the digital loans that we have, uh, you just need to type star 667 hash and you just go to the business loans and you're able to see how much uh, you can be able to get in terms of the uh, the, the, the business loans that are given uh, online or digital loans so you're able to see the limit that you uh, can be able to get uh, from the bank but i think for other uh, physical loan applications you uh, you have the documents that you need uh, in that particular slide Okay. Very good. Maybe what I'll invite you to do is uh, take a screenshot of, you know, whether you're using this on a computer or your phone, take a screenshot of this slide and let me know when you're done because I know you will need this information. Um, someone else was asking, how do I access this recording? Because it's been so insightful. I think uh, that was maybe Catherine, if I'm not wrong. 
Catherine Waivira. Don't worry about it. In uh, just uh, two minutes or so, I will be showing you how you can access this recording. Okay? I'll, I'll let you know how you can access this particular recording. Um, Peter, do you see anything in the Q&A or in the chat that you would like to respond to? Yeah, I see someone asking, uh, uh, does this one also happen to the Haba na Haba? Uh, but I just just to remind our customers that our Haba na Haba accounts, and uh, these are accounts, not necessarily loans. And this, uh, you just need to have your uh, ID or national identification document and also your KRA pin to open that particular account. But again, to remind our participants in this session, for those who are in business, um, a bronze, silver, or gold account would be better for you as opposed to Habana 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 because Habana Habana is not very specific uh, in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the owners. So the Habana Habana is for anybody who wants to do maybe basic savings, but the business accounts that you have is the silver, uh, the gold, and also the bronze uh, account packages. Um, Very good. Charles had a question. Uh, does the same requirement apply to overdrafts? Or is this, what does that yes, look like? Yes, absolutely. Uh, an overdraft is still considered as a loan or a borrowing. So we also require the same, same uh, documentation. Uh, of course, uh, we may not need uh, the sale uh, or the performer invoice because uh, the, the overdrafts are normally for cash flows. So what what we really require in this particular case is to see your your bankings, uh, just to make sure that uh, you are able to recover. Uh, once you uh, you know you use the the limits, the overdraft, uh, the cash flows that you normally have uh, in your businesses will be able to put you back to where you are. So in this particular case, you still require the same documents, but again, you may not require the performer and sale agreement. Very good. Now, Dismas says the online loans are working for him very well, and they've helped him in his business. So, Tiano, that's really good to know. Uh, Joe Mwangi is uh, asking for a comment on the interest charge in the mobile loans. He says it's way too much. Do you have any comment on that, Peter? And then we'll uh, wrap it up. Yes, the interest rates that we charge on our digital loans are very, very uh, good. I would, I would, I will. If you compare with the um, the market, and if you compare with other digital loans, uh, they are quite quite affordable. If you if you're able to compare, do a bit of comparison with other digital loans that that are offered in the market, you'll find it very very competitive. Um, because we only we are also regulated by the central bank in terms of the uh, the interest rates. So you. We just need to have a, a, a small conversation with a business banker or, 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 a, or a bank or a manager, or we can look at it and we can help you to see how much then you were able to pay within the same uh, duration. It could be three months or six months, and you realize that they, they, they are competitive. Thank you. In the interest of time, uh, Peter, I'm going to ask you to take us through our call to action, and then I'll just give some guidelines on how everyone can access these recordings. Especially today's session, because all tax compliance was pretty good. Um, Peter, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, again, I uh, really to appreciate our participants and our customers for uh, getting their time to you know, learn and also to be uh, part of this program, just to make sure that we're also getting uh, feedback from you. Uh, and again, uh, to remind ourselves to maintain that close relationship with our managers and branches. Uh, they will be able to help us with all the needs that we have. If you're not in MSME package account, as I indicated, please uh, open one, bronze, silver, or gold. It comes in handy to support you access uh, loan facilities. Bank with us consistently through our digital enhanced uh, collection channels. We have Coptil, we have MCOP, uh, MCOP uh, rather M collection, we have the Lipa and Impesa uh, solutions. Just use that uh, those um, digital solutions just to make sure that uh, you're banking well with us uh, to be able to help you uh, access facilities. Uh, I know Sam will be taking us through the uh, the portal that yes. we can be able to get the recordings and uh, you can use uh, that uh, link just to get uh, more details in terms of uh, even the solutions that we have as a bank and also the recordings. Uh, with that, I think Sam, those are the yeah. to action that I have today. Mm. Thank you.
Very good. Let me let me pick up of what you just said and share with you. So if those who are looking to access the, the, the information that we've just had, the session that we've just had, if you can go to Google, you know, if you want to use that as the beginning point, you can start with Google or you can just use the link that's going to be shared uh, right now in the chat. OK, if you click on it, it will take you to the website. So this is what the website looks like. OK, and then I would invite you to go to Knowledge Hub and then click on. Sorry. Oh, just a second there. So I would invite you to go to Knowledge Hub and click on webinars. And as soon as you're there, then it will take you to these sessions and you have a whole list, a whole list of uh, sessions that we've had in the past. And that's where you'll also find today's. I'll show you one more time. So go to the link to take you here, Knowledge Hub webinars, okay? And that will show you the whole list of uh, sessions that we've had and you can maximize that. So the link has already been shared, I believe, in the chat. And that's something that you can certainly maximize. All right, Catherine, please let me know if you've seen that and you're happy to move uh, to that. Uh, there's a link, uh, just... Uh, let me see, where's that link? Yes, there you go. Yes, the link is in the chat. Kathy, why, uh, Kathy, please let me know if you're good. If you let me know you're good, then I know that everyone else should be fine. Because I know you had asked also on behalf of everyone, perhaps. Catherine Waivire, Waivira. Yes, good. So the link is here. It's a good place to start. And you should be able to move uh, forward. All right. So this brings us to uh, our time uh, ending. I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, if you want to talk to someone from COP, there's numbers and emails and contact information on the screen. Also WhatsApp, so we're very fluid that way. So you can use the WhatsApp and your preferred means of communication. If you have any other ideas that you want us to explore, any topics that you want us to explore, today was exclusively based on your requests and we're glad we could do that. So if you have any other topics that you want us to explore in depth that help you move forward as a business, we want to do that. We're here to serve you as AMI, as COP, we're here for you. So please don't hesitate. Reach out to Fiona at fiona at africanmanagers.org or you can use the number on the screen. So we never like to finish without uh, a prayer. So we're going to end the same way we started. Michael, Michael Kim. Michael Kimayo, I, I would like you to pray for us, if that's okay. I'm going to unmute the mic uh, for you. Please uh, use the microphone, say a closing prayer for us, and we shall call it a morning. How is that? Michael, please. Uh, Michael is taking a little bit long. Who else wants to pray for us? So just that's the last item for our session. If you're ready to pray, just raise your hand. Uh, raise your hand and I'll, I'll turn to you for the prayer. Anyone going once? Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, and pray and then we'll call it the morning. Oh, sorry, Charles is here. Okay, Charles, uh, Charles, your mic is open. Please go ahead. Unmute your mic, Charles, and let's pray. Else, you have to unmute your mic and then we pray. Yes, go ahead. Charles, your mic is unmuted, but we can't hear you. All right, allow me to pray. Uh, okay, let's see. One, I really want us, one of us to pray. Gladys Mbogwa is my last trial. Gladys, please unmute your mic and pray. Okay, you know what? Let me let me pray and then we'll call it the morning. Father, we thank you so much for our, our businesses. We thank you for the learning that has happened here. We thank you for the inspiration and the information that we received. I pray that you may help us to move forward with confidence and strength, knowing that you are on our side and that we can navigate this economic uh, uh, scenarios that we are in towards the progress that we're looking for. Pray that you may be with everyone in their business, grant them success, grant them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding even as they go about their business. Give them every blessing that they need, home, 
and in their business and in all the other aspects of their lives. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And everyone said, Amen. Please go ahead and type an Amen. I type an Amen. And as soon as you're done typing an Amen, then we can release you to move to. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Your claps, I see those. Type an amen, and without an amen, we are not going to release you. There you go.